the pharynx, the part of the neck extending from the base of the skull up to the sixth cervical vertebra or the lower border of the cricoid cartilage of the larynx or from the base of the skull up to the pharyngoesophageal junction. The musculo membranous structure extending from the base of the skull up to the pharyngoesophageal junction is known as the pharynx. So, today I will talk about the anatomy of the pharynx. What is the exact location of the pharynx in the neck? The part of the body connecting the head to the uppermost part of the trunk, this part is the neck. So, the part of the neck in front of the vertebra, behind the nose, behind the oral cavity and behind the larynx is the pharynx. So, exact location of the pharynx. This is the frontal bone, the nasal bone. the bony palate and the soap palate. the genioid muscle, this is the hyoid bone. So, the genioid and the mylohyoid muscle which is forming the floor of the oral cavity. So, this is the genioid and the lower most is the mylohyoid muscle forming the floor of the oral cavity. the genioglossus muscle forming the mass of the tongue. the apiglottis, the unpaired cartilage of the larynx, the thyroid cartilage is here. The body of the spinoid bone and spinoidal air sinuses are here.
the first cervical or the atlas, the second, the third, fourth, fifth and the upper part of the sixth cervical vertebra. superior, middle, superior and the inferior nasal concha so this musculo membrane tube situated behind the nasal cavity this part of the pharynx is known as the nasopharynx the part of the pharynx the total length of pharynx is 12 to 14 centimeters so this part extending from the base of the skull up to the level of the palate and this passivant ridge is the nasopharynx and this part of the pharynx is known as pharyngeal isthmus. playing key role during swallowing and first blow from the mouth. This is a riz known as basement riz. Forming by the posterior descending fibers of the palatopharyngeal muscle. 1.2 cm behind and some below to the posterior part of the inferior nasal concha. This is the opening of the auditory tube or tympanopharyngeal or eustachian tube. There are two elevations formed by the salpharyngoglossal and salpharyngopharynx muscles. And this is the lateral wall. Which is having two arches. The palatoglossal arch. And the palatopharyngeal arch. Between the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches. This is the location of the palatine tonsil. Aggregations of mucosal lymphoid tissues are forming a ring of the tonsils known as Waldair ring. Waldair ring. Ring. Besides the palatine tonsil, it is also having the nasopharyngeal tonsil, the tubular tonsil and the lingual tonsils. So collectively the lingual tonsil, the palatine tonsil and nasopharyngeal and the tubular tonsil are forming the Waldair ring of the mucosal or mucosa associated lymphoid tissue known as malt. So, Externally, the pharynx related to the nasal cavity, the oral cavity and the larynx.
So, this part is known as apipharynx or the nasopharynx, the oropharynx or the mesopharynx and the laryngopharynx or the hypopharynx. So, anatomically and functionally the pharynx is divided in three parts, the nasopharynx in very simple words. The nasopharynx is simply posterior extension of the nasal cavity and functionally it is also related to the respiratory function like the nose. One more thing, the underlying covering epithelium of this nasopharynx is almost same as we can see in the nasal cavity that is this ciliated columnar. The ciliated columnar which is also known as the respiratory mucosa ciliated columnar. Below the nasopharynx, the epithelium is changed from ciliated columnar to the stratified simple squamous <coughs> from the simple columnar that is ciliated to the multiple squamous layer that is stratified squamous known keratinized. So, the part of oropharynx and the laryngopharynx both are covered by stratified squamous known keratinized mucosa because it has to bear the wear and tear mechanism due to the bolus of the foot. So, the oropharynx and laryngopharynx are related to the food or the gastrointestinal tract. But oropharynx is also related to the respiration because the respiratory gases which are entering from the nasal, nasal cavity entering in the larynx and the bolus of the food which is entering in the oropharynx from the oropharyngeal uh, isthmus from the oral cavity are entering in the esophagus. So, there is crossing of the gases and the bolus in the oropharynx. So, oropharynx is related to both respiration and the uh, gastrointestinal tract, but the laryngopharynx is related only to the food.